Hi guys, welcome to another Luke's View TV review thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, hope you've had a good week of watching TV, because I know I have. It's been an awesome week for watching TV. Um, let me just first apologise if you hear any background bra bleh, background noise. Sorry, It's um, because my dogs are in the background and I have the window open, so yeah, a bit of excess noise. So if you hear noise, that's what it is. Uh, let me dive straight in. Um, Saturday I didn't really watch all, and then Sunday, as you all know, I watched Once Upon a Time. Love, loving the series. Uh, we have only five episodes left to watch of, the, of this particular series. Desperately hoping that um, five are going to um, buy the series three, but you never know with Channel 5, do you? Um, but in this one, you saw basically the fact that Regina wanted to get back at Snow White for killing her mother. And the way that she was going to do this was to inflict a curse so that Henry would love her again. But to do the curse, she had to kill and use the heart of her enemy, which happened to be Snow White. So in Regina's eyes, it was a win-win sort of situation. Um, on the other hand, Henry heard all this and yeah, went into a massive fit and basically tries to get rid and kill all magic within Storybrooke. You do actually see how Storybrooke was first created. Now, you saw how Regina got Henry, which, if I was following the story along, Henry's original name was Owen, and he actually had a dad. Now, basically what Regina did is, um, the first day of Storybrooke, well, the first week of Storybrooke, so I should mention, she basically had everyone in her power. She had all the hearts um, to everyone. Basically what she did is she got the sheriff's hair, told the sheriff that she wanted um, Owen's dad stopped at county lines and basically pulled over to drink driving. He then saw that and yeah, got in a great big car chase and yeah, basically nearly tried to kill him. You saw them both split up, you saw the fact that the dad got taken away by um, Regina and put somewhere and that Owen did a runner and got his uncle and they came back to try and find Storybrooke. Um, didn't find Storybrooke because Obviously, you can't see Storybrooke from the outside, you can only see it from the inside, which is very strange. However, right at the back end of the episode, you saw the fact that the dad was still alive somewhere, and the fact that he'd been reawakened, so that's a good thing. Another little side note is that, basically, Snow White had killed Cora, Regina's mum, and she's in total pieces about it, doesn't know what to do. And... Basically, the only way that she can think to get over it is by Regina killing her. So she goes to Regina's front door and basically says, kill me. What Regina decides to do is torture it even more by pulling her heart out and showing it a great big dark spot that she's got on her heart. Basically what she said is, I don't really need to kill you because when you kill my mum, you've got this great big black spot on your heart and that means that you're forever tainted, really. And... um. I don't have to kill you because all I have to do is wait while you destroy the little family that you've fought so hard to get. So yeah, it's a good episode. I can see it building and building up to a spectacular series finale. So yeah, we've yet with that yet to come. I'm aware I keep rambling. Um, then on Sunday again, I watched Fashion Police, which is you know the little panel show Joan Rivers and Kelly Osborne, and I can never remember the other two from it. Um, but there you go. Basically, it's, um, they got a load of pictures of celebrities' fashion do's and don'ts throughout the week. Basically, John Rivers just rips into them, and it is so, so funny. Um, I think one of her quotes the other week was something along the lines of, Oh, I see the straw coming out of her nose. I could have sworn it was Lindsay Lohan or something like that. But it's, yeah, basically, I just sit there and absolutely die laughing all the way through. Then on Monday I watched Whitney and in this episode her dad reappears and gives her a check for five thousand um, dollars. She's in a, a bit of a should I shouldn't I mood what do I do with the money. In the end she finally decides to give it to her best friend Lily who's been living out of a box or an apartment for the past couple of years so that she can get her life back on track. What she does is she decides to withdraw the money and give it to Roxanne. And Roxanne puts it in her purse and loses it and it is just absolutely hilarious because she's obviously like trying to find it, trying to find it, she can't find it. Um, then basically what happens is 
Whitney comes back and says, Lula, I need the money back. My dad needs the money back. So she gives her the money back. And basically she has to write a check out for $5,000 of her own money. And then basically the dad, well, the dad winds up Whitney and irritates her. So she decides, no, I'm going to keep the money and gives it back to Lula. And Lily in turn decides to give it to um, her, her friend that owns the bar. So Roxanne has to write out about three checks all for $5,000 when she's lost her original $5,000. Yeah, so it's absolutely hilarious. Well worth a watch. Um, just going to move a little here. Um, then on Tuesday, I watched CSI New York. Now, this is an excellent, excellent episode and what CSI does best. Very quirky, but yet interesting ways of basically getting someone to kill someone. Um, now, the, the episode before, you saw the fact that an arsonist had come out of um, prison and that someone had been trying to implicate him. That was last week. This week, you saw the same arsonist. Um, so it's a sort of two-parter, but not a two-parter. Um, you find out a bit of why he started committing the fires. And the fact is that he was abused by his mum and his stepbrother and basically tries to kill, him, kill them. The ways that he kills them is just spectacular because the mum is, she dies of dehydration but yet she's found in an elevator lit a fire. So that sounds strange. Then the se second one is he has an instantaneous heart attack which seems all natural causes and everything. Turns out he put a poison within his mayonnaise in the sandwich. So yeah, great, great episode. Um, it finally comes to head when the um, arsonist tries to kill his little baby sister. Well, I should say his adoptive baby sister. Um, because she couldn't help, uh, you know, stop the abuse. Um, but obviously she stays alive because the team sort of rush and rush and rush to try and save her. So yeah. Didn't really watch anything the Tuesday, uh, else on the Tuesday, sorry, because I normally watch new tricks. Totally forgot to record it. So I'll find that on the iPlayer somewhere. Then Wednesday, if you've been watching my videos for a, a fair while, you'll know that I've been raving and raving about the fact that a friend of mine, Jamie Jobuk, I'll link his username and Twitter and everything below, has a song in the Sci-Fi Channel's movie, um, Sharknado. Yeah, decided to watch that on Wednesday because it's finally come over to the, uh, to the UK, sorry. Great, great film. Had me watching every little second, um, because normally in the film I'm, you know, on the computer, on the iPad, you know, tweeting, doing this, this. Couldn't do that. Had to put everything down and just sit and watch the film. Um, it's about, basically, um, a family had been split. The mum was Tara Reed, the dad was someone else, um, and the dad had a, um, a bar, you know, a, um, an alcohol, do you know what I mean? Um, basically, and he lived near the sea. Now, it had turned out that Los Angeles, I think it was in Los Angeles, decided, uh, was having a tornado and the tornado was getting ever worse and worse and rain was coming down and down. By some miraculous reason, sharks got up into the, the rain and yeah, it's basically running from the sharks, trying to kill all the sharks. And then you find the fact that the dad's girlfriend that is running along with um, had been attacked by sharks before and the fact that si I think it, I think a line was six people went in to try and save it and one girl came out all the six died from the sharks so yeah that's why she has a bit of a, a vengeance towards the sharks but it is an absolutely amazing amazing film and you really need to go check that out um, then on Thursday I watched Britain Nang's Next Top Model now great great episode because um, this is the one where basically they had to fight to get their place in Barbados and um, one of them was, if I remember, um, a photo shoot and it was for, is it Revlon you pronounce that? Um, and basically they had to um, portray the famous Revlon red lips look and whoever did uh, the, the worst out of it um, was more or less kicked out and didn't come along to Barbados. Turns out that it was, um, I think it's 
whether it's Sarah, it's one of the Irish ones, I can't remember whether it's Sarah or not. Then I watched Don't Trust the Bean, apparently 23, and in this one you saw that June finally got her job that she's been after for the past couple of episodes, and she made a new friend. The only trouble is that the new friend that she thought was trying to help her in her job was actually her nemesis, was trying to, you know, sabotage every little thing. Like, um, every time her boss would come in, the gut, she's not cooperating, this, that, do you know what I mean? Basically trying to destroy her career. And Corey says, I'll go in and I'll try and, you know, sort of neutralise the position, the situation, sorry, and, you know, sort of, because I'm the normal nemesis, I know what she's playing at. Turns out that she decides to become her best friend. Yeah, so not a good thing. Um, in the end, she accidentally stabs her with a pen knife. And it is just absolutely hilarious. So you need to go check that out. Then on Friday, I did actually watch something for this, uh, for a change, sorry. And on Friday, I watched Nikita. Now, Nikita, I have been waiting to come back for ages and ages. Um, it is, I think, based on a film from like 1970, summer, not entirely sure. Um, but it's basically, she used to be a secret agent and she went rogue. And basically, the past two episodes, she was trying to get rid of the agency that had basically controlled her that she'd gone rogue from. She did do that, but now she's controlling the agency by getting all the bad people to come back so that they can neutralise them and get rid of them. Um, in this episode, you saw the fact that um, there was a, a, a former division operative in China and he was killing off um, six or seven CIA agents. And yeah, they had to go over and stop him. Um, Great, great episode. I've been waiting for Nikita to come back for ages and ages. If you don't know Nikita, if you think of the film, I think it's Assault with Angelina Jolie, it's got that sort of vibe. Um, it's very secret agent slash action, but it has its, its lighter moments. It's, you know, it's, so, it's softer, intimate moments. Um, so it's well worth a watch. Uh, and then tonight is Saturday, and I'm going to go rewatch two episodes well, two shows that I've missed this week, which was New Tricks, which I said, and The Closer, which was on Wednesday. Um, so I hope you enjoyed my little Luke's views rambling, and I hope you remember to like, share, you know, do all the usual things, um, check out all my social media, and I hope you have a awesome week. So, bye. Well, now it's Luke's